I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevning. Welcome to Creek Devil. I have a very special guest today, uh, and this one's special because it's sort of a direct link to a, an event that happened to me when I was 18. That's something that's been, you know, really affected my life over the years. Uh, for anyone who's ever read my book in search of the unknown or has heard me talk on different radio shows about what we refer to now as the uh, the Clark Ranch incident back in 1976 uh, where me and three of my buddies uh, after meeting John Green and Renee DeHinden how we were going to help them in the field and, and their work and subject of Bigfoot so me and my friend sat around the school one day and we said we kind of talked about well where has anybody heard anything in their area um you know, any weird noises, anybody seen anything. And one of the guys who lived in Roy, Washington, said, well, out at the Clark Ranch, they've been hearing a bunch of weird screams at night, you know, for the past couple of weeks. So I said, well, can you get permission for us to go out there and, you know, snoop around their property? So he did that, and uh, we went to his house in Roy. Then we took our backpacks. We hiked the railroad tracks uh, a relative short distance to the Clark Ranch, uh, the family there pointed the direction out towards the woods where they'd been hearing the noises at night, and off we went. And just in a nutshell, we ended up being surrounded for the whole night by at least four of these things. One of the guys saw one. Uh, another one of the guys was pulled partway out of the tent by one. Uh, you know, for us, it was a pretty harrowing night, actually. So uh, my guest, Dwayne, had his own encounter there when he was a boy. Uh, Dwayne, welcome to the show. I, I'm, I'm glad to be on the show. It, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you, and it is a pleasure to share my story with you guys. Uh, it, it's a real. I, again, I, we've talked earlier. I, I don't like the word story because it, for me, it implies fake. But I, I'd love to share right, my right. reality with you. Well, you know, and again, it's it's kind of fascinating to me because it's a direct link to what happened to us. And before we start, everyone, be sure to check out my website, williamjevening.com. And if anyone's had their own encounter that they're willing to talk to me about, you can get a hold of me at my personal email, williamjevening at yahoo.com, or you can submit it on the website. And be sure to check out our Facebook page also, the JRG Bigfoot Research page. Um, anyway, Dwayne... Let's go back to that time, and that was uh, in the early seventies, right? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, when you're a kid, eight between eight and ten years old, uh, you don't pay attention to dates and times and yada yada. You just pay attention sure. to what the hell you're doing and having fun. But yeah, it was, I, I'm guessing I've I've tried I've I've gone back. I've talked to my mom and whatnot because she, she was there and done the math on it. It's right around seventy two, seventy three, right around in there. And okay, so what? How? I guess walk us into what happened. How did you end up in in that place? And and what was okay? Going on? I'll go backwards a little bit. Um, I lived in Lake City, Lakewood, Washington, and I had a friend of mine across the street, Darby. I and I'm hoping he hears this show because I'd love to get a hold of him because he has the rest of the story or reality. Um, and we were buddies, but he moved away. And there was a real good opportunity for his mom, single mom, son, and a daughter out in Roy. You know, it was an opportunity they couldn't refuse. It was an elderly couple. The old man had to go to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. You know, okay, stuff we don't need to know. So she took it, and part of the contingency was, I'll buy you guys some horses if you want to go out there. Well, that's old kids. Uh, it was a bummer for me because I lost my buddy. But anyway, so that happened. But the parents were still friends and i guess we used to go out there and ironically i can't remember ever being there but this one night and day so we were out there we showed up uh, i don't know what time it was i'm gonna say about five o'clock right around in there and um 
they had, this is a Roy Washington, Muck Creek. They lived on Muck Creek, which fed into Muck Lake. Anybody from Roy, I'm sure will know. Desolate little town. You you roll in there. There's a sign that says Speed Trap. You take a left, there's Roy Tavern. There's Judge Roy Beans. <laughs> and you go a little farther, you take a right, and there was a sign that said Jesus loves you. And that's about all I remember as a kid. There's no, it, it, no, no. You take a left or a right anywhere, and it's twenty miles of gravel road, and you get to a house, and there you are. <laughs> I guess, and it's kind of still that way. I haven't been there in right. a while. I do want to go back and find my location. Anyway, um, so I'll get to the story. So we show up. We're a little early. My buddy's not there. He's at a friend, and of course, a friend's house is what ten miles away, whatever it may be. So we get there, sure. and I'm like, "Well, where's Darby?" Uh, well, he's at his friend. So they send his sister up on the horse to go, you know, get my buddy. And, well, in the meantime, while this is happening, across the street from their house is like, I don't know whether they call it a pond, a swamp, whatever. But there was a giant boulder at one end of it, and it was about, mm, I'd say, from the boulder. It was a big, giant boulder. It was really distinct. A big, giant boulder. And it went out maybe 30 feet, and then it hit the just brush. And you couldn't see two feet into this brush, you know, 180 degrees either way. Behind you was the gravel boat. So I'm sitting there doing what kids do, playing in the water. I'm finding little frogs, eggs, frogs, whatever. This is awesome. I've been before that. I've never been camping. I don't know anything about anything. I have no Bigfoot experience. No, no nothing. I may have seen a patty thing, but at eight years old. 10 years old. I don't care. So I'm playing on this rock. I'm finding all this stuff. Well, a little snake swims up to me. You know what? Your typical gardener snake, your Northwest gardener snake, little green striped back thing, swims up to me. I grab it and I'm holding it and I'm like, all right, this is cool. And it does its little stink thing, everything else. And I'm like, this is awesome. You know, this is cool. <laughs> and I wanted to keep it. So I ran to the house. And of course, my mom, not liking snakes, going, ah, get that goddamn thing out of here. I says, well, there's snakes out here. Can I get a coffee can or something? Well, she grabs an old Folgers can, uh, you know, from somewhere. She found one. And I got it. And I said, can you poke some holes in the lid? It still had the lid. And and this was back before they were plastic. You know, it was a metal can. She pokes holes in the lid. And I run out. I run back out to this rock. And I'm like, this is awesome. So I sit there. And I'm looking around. And I hear a little splat. I I hear some cracking and some creaking. You know, and I'm looking up, and again, you can't see two feet into this brush. But I hear a little crack, a little creak, but I, and I'm think, thinking nothing of it. I have no woods experience whatsoever, but this is kind of awesome. I'm by myself. And I hear a little splash. I look up. I don't see anything. And here comes another snake. Oh, awesome. I grab it. It swims right up to the rock where I'm at. I grab it and throw it in the can. And within the next 15 to 20 minutes, I must have caught 15, 20 of these things. I filled this can up. I'm like, this is awesome. There's water snakes all over here. You know, I'm like, this is cool. So I fill up my jar, run back, and I'm like, look at all the snakes I got. And of course, my mom freaked out. She's like, I don't want to see that shit. Oh, sorry. Uh, anyway, and then this time, my buddy gets back with his sister, and I'm like, hey, dude, man, check out all the snakes I got. He goes, where'd you get those? And I said, out of the water. I said, they swam up to me on the rock. I said, I could hear them splashing. They were jumping in the water, and they, they swam up to me, and I caught them. I had this coffee can full of freaking garden snake, garden snake, whatever you want to call them. And he's like, well, okay, cool. He says, but they're not. I said, I cut all these water snakes. And he's like, well, there, there aren't no water snakes. And I'm like, well, whatever. I caught them all out of the water. They all swam to me. I said, they jumped in the water. I heard them splash, and they all came to me. And he goes, there are no water snakes. And I'm like, all right, whatever. So again, we're just a couple little eight-year-olds. So we grab them, we throw them all out in the gravel and throw rocks at them and all that crazy crap little kids do. You know what I mean? Bam, you know, there's <laughs> there's 20 snakes out there and whatever. Sure. So that was all good. And then we went and did our thing and really can't remember what we did. Play, just whatever, sword fighting, stick fighting, fill in the blank, you know. And then it, it got dark. Mm-hmm got dark and we're still out playing and it got even funner 
And I remember he said, he, and again, they had a couple of horses. His sister had a horse named Tonto, and his, ironically, was named Sasquatch. No joke. <laughs> but, yeah, and it was a gray-colored horse, and, <laughs> and the, horse was a, the horse was a bastard. You know, he goes, hey, you want to ride on my horse? And I said, yeah, let's do it. And I, there was a, uh, oh, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to ping pong around. I think, you know, you've had an encounter. This thing is like a, a gift file in your head, you know, on the computer. You know, it was a one minute thing. Sure. But it just it rolls through your head. So to try and build everything around it is tough. So you, you kind of ping pong around. And my apologies for that. Yeah, that's all right. You're, yeah, that's okay. No, you're you're building so, the context. Uh, uh, let me give you the layout. Uh, this house, you know, again, gravel road that led up to it. The creek was on the left of the road, which is across the street from the house, and it took a turn. Right at the, it was a dead end. It took a, a right turn and went to the left side of their house, which I believe is Muck Creek, and. And they had a fence. It was probably, I'd say, a third of an acre is where they had their horses. They had a giant porch. I'm trying to paint the scene here. And at the back of their property, to the left, sure. was, I call it a feeding station. I don't know. That's where they went and, you know, fed all the horses. And to the right was like a little stable, I guess, where the horses slept. Again, I'm eight years old. I don't know anything about this. But I'm like, okay, that's cool. And on the back of the house, on right. the very left side, they had two big floodlights out there. And on the right side, two big floodlights. And it barely made it to the end of the property, but you could see that the horses were there or not. What not? Anyway, uh, earlier in that day, just as it was getting dark, hey, you want to ride the horse? I said, okay. So I run up to the fence, which was from the fence to the creek on the side of their property was maybe 20 feet. And on the other side of that Creek, the bank went up. It was about three feet down to the Creek. We we were catching minnows all day anyway. And then the other side of that Creek went up about, I want to say about eight, 10 feet. And it went up, it was pretty high on the other side. It was, it was banked up really well. And that's where it went. And, uh, so we're out there playing, and I hop on the fence. We get on this horse. He's smacking it, smacking it. We come by this little tree, and he's smacking the horse, and I fell off it, and the damn thing kicked me, and I did probably three 360s in the air. Fell on my ass, and <laughs> and to this no. day, I ain't riding no horses. That's too big a pet to be telling what to do. And so that kind of imprinted on my brain <laughs> from that day. You play with your horse. The horse is an asshole. I, I, again, sorry. Uh, you know. I don't want nothing to do with that no more. <laughs> so anyway, that went on, and so I was just interested in riding the horses. So we're out, and we got some sticks, and we're sword fighting. We're just doing our kid thing. And I come off the porch. We, we ran in. I got something to drink. I come off the porch, and I just catch out of the corner of my eye on this bank some, uh, you know, uh, a red-amber light, two of them. I, ju- I just catch it. And I didn't think much of it. And I ran past it. And yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I smack him with a stick. And I catch it again. And I stop. And he runs way out by the horse. He wants me to chase him. He runs out by where the horse things are. And I look to my left. And there's this amber, I don't know, amber, red. I don't want to say red. It really wasn't red. It wasn't, you know. Maybe maybe a yeah, reddish tint. It, but it was, it was obvious. I shine and I, you know, and it caught my attention and I looked at it and, you know, sure. I, I turned to my left and I looked at it and I said, Damn, what, you know, what's that? So I walk a little closer and I'm staring at it and here's these just two big, big ass, I, you know, I, again, I'm drawing off a eight, nine year old memory, glowing lights is what it looked like. And I'm pretty sure it was from the floodlights right. on the porch. Just look, and, and, and it just caught my attention. So I walk a little close to the fence, and I'm staring at it, and I'm not focused because we're staring at the lights, riding the horses, blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't completely dark yet. You know, mm-hmm. dawn had just happened. There was still a little bit of glow in the background. And um, I'm just I'm fixated on this, and, and I'm staring at it, and it starts to just move these, these 
two eyes, light, shine, eye shine, wh- whatever you want to call it, just starts to move left and right. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, you know, about two, three inches mm-hmm. left and right. And that really sold me on it. And I'm like, oh, God damn. So I walk a little closer. I get all the way up to the fence, and it starts swaying maybe six inches to a foot left and right. And I'm just staring at that. Now my focus is starting to come in, and I'm getting the silhouette. And I'm like, damn, what the hell is that? You know, that's it, what I'm thinking in my head because I don't know what's out here. I've never been in the woods. I've been camping. And then I hear this, and I, I always feel stupid try, trying to do the noise. But it, 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 I know. But it did a no grunt. Don't I just don't have the that. lungs this thing had because I could feel it as much as I hear it. It just went, kind of, kind of like that. I mean, it was kind of a cow noise. Is you know how a cow goes, and they kind of, you know sure. how they spit it off at the end. Right. But I'm, I'm fixated on this thing. I've been an animal lover yeah. all my life. Yeah. I still am. And so it doesn't bother me. I'm not scared. I'm not, I'm just, I'm curious. I'm like, what the hell is that? And it it keeps doing this, but it's a low, 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 it's a low tone. And then at the end it goes, you know, Mm -hmm. it it peaked up and it's still staring at me. So I made it all the way to the fence. I have my hands on the fence and I'm staring at this. And I'm like, and, and then my buddy, you know, he's still out there doing his thing. He, if I know my buddy, he's probably in jail or in prison by now. He was kind of back. Yeah, he was always in trouble. Thing. He was that guy. Yeah, he come up behind me, smacked me with a <laughs> stick. And I'm like, dude. And he goes, what are you looking at? And I says, what is that? And he goes, what? And I, I point straight up. And, you know, I put my arm right next to his head. And I point. And I says, what is that? And he sees it. And, and then he backs up. He's not, he doesn't come all the way up to the fence where I'm at. And I says, what is that? He goes, I don't know. And I go, do you see it? And he goes, yeah. And I go, well, what is it? He goes, I don't know. I said, well, you live out here. What is that? And he just keeps saying, I don't know. <laughs> and it's swaying back and forth. And then it does it again. It did this about four or five times. Just, mm. and if I had to give you a feeling on it, the feeling I felt, and I, and again, I can't I can't tie this to that goofy snake thing earlier. And I talked to you earlier, and you kind of creeped me out about that. But anyway, um, it did it one more time. It went, mm-hmm. and if I had to describe the feeling, the best way I can explain it, as I talked to you before, was when you're playing with a puppy with a treat or a sock or something, or, you know, or a dog, and and you don't give it to it enough times, it does that, ah, you know what I mean? That, damn it, give it to me, you know? That right. was the feeling I got. At the time, and again, after talking to you, and it, it creeped me out a little bit, but at the time, it, it felt, I had the feeling, and again, I'm, again, I'm a stupid little eight-year-old, I had the feeling it wanted to come play. I had no fear at this point. And it was big. It was there standing there and again at this point because i've been staring at it long enough for you know the the light in the back and the light from the porch to you know get my focus enough i'm still seeing these glowing eyes and my buddy's about a foot two foot behind me and at this point it's left arm and i remember the tree distinctly It, it was a tree on the other side of the bank of this little creek. And in this creek didn't have but five inches of the water in it. And at that, there, it was like a, a dead branch, a, a, a broke branch, but still living, just hanging down. And it was under that. And it, its left hand came up, and I could see the hair. And, you know, I'm focused by this point. Its left hand came up and touched just right under where that little branch break was branch hang whatever I, I don't know what you call them it looked like a broken branch but it was still alive but it's just hanging sure. wrong but it was under that and it put its hand right right up under that and i stick my head forward over that fence like damn and i never did ask my buddy who is that i'm like what is that and i asked him is it an elk is it a cow is it and he's like no 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 um oh my apologies um Earlier, about 
I'd say about an hour before this, I get a I get a big stink smell, and you know we're out there playing, and the stink stopped me, and I'm like, damn dude, it reeks out here, and he says, oh yeah, he says my mom tells me that the farmer up the field, their cows poop in the stream, and sometimes it comes down through the creek, and you can smell it. Don't know, if, uh, and I can say one way or another you probably know more about this than me but i did smell a smell and well let me ask you did the smell persist or did it it, it hit, hit me and, then and it go away? faded it faded off and after the smell faded if this was about 15 minutes later is when i seen the the eyes I'm thinking if it's, you know, if it was, you know, cow manure or something, that would be, I grew up on a farm not that far from Roy. Uh, it, it would persist. No, you know, this kind of came time period. and it went. So, again, eight years old. I buy that. All right. Cow poop in a stream. Fair enough. Didn't smell like cow poop, though. I've smelled, believe me, I, I'm sure. right here in South Hill, Kuala. I go to the fair every year. I know what cow crap smells like. All right. And that's not the smell I remember. What I <laughs> exactly. smelled was disgusting. <laughs> It was icky, and that's why I mentioned it. Because he's got horses out yeah. there crapping all over their yard, and you know, and there's not a there's there's not a giant difference so you, between you horse recognize... poop and cow poop. They both stink, but they have a they not have a, huge... a distinct flavor no, or smell, difference. whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't want to say flavor, but anyway. So, but I did, <laughs> but I did mention that, and I'm <laughs> I'm kind of thinking, you know, looking back again. This was about 40, 40 years ago. I'm fifty now. Uh, again, there was an elderly couple that lived in this house before then. I wished I could talk to them. Um, I think they were just kind of oblivi- oblivious to this. I think this was happening. They just didn't know. But that's just that's just me and and my thinking. You know, right. looking back you know, with a little more knowledge and a little more older. But anyway, the smell pass it off like all right, cow crap, fair enough, because it came and it went. And uh, okay, so. Sure back to me just fixated on this creature and again the the silhouette is there it's not man shaped because i did because i i remember distinctly not asking him who is that i'm asking him what is that i've never been camping i've been in the woods I, you know and i don't know anything about bigfoot at this point mm. I, I just i don't know i may have seen the patterson film don't know but i i can't piece all that together but i seen what i've seen and man i'm telling you again it's like a it's like a gift you see on the internet it just rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls it was a one minute thing and i wish somebody could just plug into my ear and right. suck this memory out and i hope we get this technology you know because i ain't lying about this i ain't making this up and i've told this story again i don't like story right. but i've told people well okay now uh, okay i'm ping-ponging around i'm sorry well, anyway, well, let me ask you when you when you saw the eye shine, was it about? No, 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 no. This, this was head, about think, this. This was probably about or, fifteen feet above what, me. What pro- again? This, this, yeah, yeah. This well, this creek from their oh, property. Really? Okay, they had a fence, and then there was the creek there, and the creek dropped down about three feet, but the other side of the creek went up probably about eight, ten feet. So okay, it sure. was way. I'm looking up at it, and this was probably fifty to seventy feet, maybe. Right around in there again. I'm a kid. I can't. I don't just distance real well there. You know. You know on a on a football field, maybe a quarter of the football sure. field, uh, close enough to see enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and enough to spook me. Enough. You know. And, well, it didn't spook me. Sure. That was the right. thing. I, I was inquisitive. I walk over to the fence, and while my buddy walks up, and what are you looking at? What is that? You know, we get into all of that, and he never gets to where I'm at because he sees it now. And I'm asking him all these questions. What is it? What is it? What is it? I don't know. And it went and it did that for the last time that we heard it anyway. It did that, you know, that, that wanting sound is what it mm-hmm. sounded like a wanting kind of sound. Sure. And all I hear after that was it was like the freaking three mm-hmm. stooges. I hear just <laughs> my buddy beating feet. Well, that fear, yeah, that fear he had, it jumped into me. <laughs> Because I don't know. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, his fear jumped right into here. my chest. And I went, well, damn it. If you don't know what the hell it is, I'm out of here, too. So I'm behind him. We run to the porch. 
head for the door, <laughs> and it was like the freaking Three Stooges trying to get into the house. Uh, the parents are in at this time. In the meantime, while all this is going down, our parents are playing. You remember gin rummy? Uh, it was a big thing back in the day, I guess. Uh, you know, they're in there drinking, sure. doing parent things. They're playing gin rummy. We come flying in the house. Hey, mom, dad, you got to come see this. You got to come see this. And they're just not having it. You know, they look over and you guys go play. No, 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 no. There's something out here. You need to come look. You need to come look. You need to come look. They're, they're just like, no, you know, they're just, they're, go play, go play. And we're looking at each other like, well, Jesus Christ, this sucks, <laughs> you know. So we run down to the hall, but his older sister, she's kind of a teenager, <laughs> she, she was down the hall. So we run down there and we beat on her door, and Robin was her name, uh, Miller. Uh, man, Miller, I hope they hear this, because that's that's the other need, and I need. But anyway, we bang on her door, Robin, you need to come see this. And of course, teenage daughter just got the kid, you know, eight-year-old banging on the door, she ain't having nothing. And it's like, get the hell out of here. And so, again, we look at each other like, well, this just all sucks. <laughs> you know, we come back down the hall. We we try one more time. They're all in the living room right. around the freaking card table playing gin. Gin! You know, that's the next thing I hear. Gin! You know, rummy. My mom yells, rummy. You know, it's like, would you guys come <laughs> look? Ain't happening. Just go play. We look at each other. We walk out to the porch. <laughs> you know, we... <laughs> I mean, we didn't want to go back out because now I'm scared because of my friend. He's scared, and I don't know why. So we walk back out. We stand right. on the porch. We're hugged up to the, you know, the back door. And the horses are on the porch. This was probably about a uh, maybe a eight by twelve porch off the back of the house. And we come out, and I go, "Well, your your horses are, you know." I'm looking. And there's a horse to the right of me, and they're under each light, you know, on the porch. And I'm like, well, you know, hey, are we riding horses or what? But he looks and he goes, they're not supposed to be up here. So he sticks his head back in the door and he goes, Mom, the horses are on the porch. She yells, what? He goes, the horses are on the porch. She said, well, shoo them off. <laughs> and, and I don't know, I don't know how this works at their house. You know what I mean? <laughs> he looks at them and he goes, "Sure, shoo. And of course, we're like eight years old. You know, these horses are damn near twice as tall as us. Well, his was a little short. His was a little shorter. Yeah, yeah. And he goes shoo, they look and at I remember you like you're he, crazy. Punch, he punches <laughs> his in the chest, and he goes, "Beat, you know, beat it. Get off the porch. Go. You gotta go." And the horses are just hugging the house, and I'm like, and I and I'm fixated as to where I seen these eye shine things, and it's gone. It's gone. You know, it's yeah. not in there no more. Well, anyway, the next, the rest of the night was it was probably another hour and a half. They're not letting us in, but the folks are in drinking, having fun. They don't want us anywhere. The daughter ain't having us in. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it, it, it kind of sucked for us. So we just sat down with the horses by the porch and just hang out until, hey, it's time to go to bed. And we stayed. Well, the horses were there. I said, I mean, it was maybe a did, okay. sense of security. The horses weren't leaving the porch, even though he yelled in. Well, right. again, the folks. Again, this is back in the seventies, and these guys, who knows what they were doing? We were, we all went through the seventies, right? So, who knows? Yeah, again, looking back, <sighs> I don't know if they were just drinking. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go there. And, <laughs> I'm not going to send my parents out on anything. But sure, I think we can assume stuff there. So we hung out on the porch with the horses for a while, and we petted them and just kind of hung there for a little while until they said, well, you know, it's time to go to bed. Well, they never did. They stayed up. And so we went to his room and just went in there and mm -hmm. stared at the ceiling. I don't think we slept all night. Just stared at the ceiling. Never talked about it. Just kind of freaked out about it because nobody was listening. Nobody was hearing anything, you know. Right. Yeah, well, we walked in and went, so I remember him saying, well, mom, the horses are still on the porch, <laughs> you know, and that was probably the last thing I remember. And then the next morning, everybody got up. Mm -hmm. I think the folks were hung over and looking back and they were pretty hung over. They were one eye and everything. And I just remember leaving this place and right. just on the back seat, you know, back then there was no seatbelt, anything. I just remember staring out the back window at that little pond and to the right of their house, just staring at that. 
and I never talked about it since. But we did go out there, and we could see signs right. of there was no footprints or anything, but there was trample down. You know, you you could see where you could see something was there. Def, uh, most mm-hmm. definitely, something was there. Obviously, you know, there wasn't footprints. It wasn't a cow. It wasn't an elk. Or, you know, I, I mean, again, at eight years old, I don't know what's what. Right. But you could see where something was there because everything was padded down. And I remember we looked up at that half broke, half alive branch hanging off that tree. And I remember we looked up at it, and it's at least twice as tall as us. And yeah. you know, at eight years old, what are you? Four feet. So that's probably eight feet. Wow. And this thing was a little under that. So I would give this thing between six and a half right. and seven and a half feet. Looking back, I just remember the arm. The arm came up and okay. touched the crook okay. of that branch, which was just a little bit above its head, and it touched that. And that's kind of right. when I got a little freaked out too. And that's when my that's when I heard my buddy just start beating feet. You know, I got a little freaked out. I. So you get you got to look at it. No, I you didn't get a lot it, of detail. I got a very right? good. So I, it definitely wasn't a person. It was not a man standing. The, the eyes were. The, I mean, the freaking mm-hmm. eye shine I seen was. I want to say close to golf ball, close to golf ball size, not quite big enough to see. Yeah, I mean, it was only right. it. You could almost see to the back of its head. It was kind of odd. You could really, really see deep into him. And it would mm-hmm. sway, and then I would kind of it would dim out, and it would sway to the right, and it would dim out, and I'm assuming it's from the floodlights they had, you know, and it it just swayed back and forth and just did this little, right. I want to call it a wanting grunt. <laughs> and you know, with primates, that's a that's a that behavior is a sign of agitation. Yeah, That's it, what well, at eight, wild when I don't, agitated. you know, I don't know that. I mean, I was intrigued right, you would, by you it. Have known that. He flipped yeah. out. I, I, you know, if the fence, if the goddamn fence in the stupid creek wasn't there, I'd have probably walked right to it. I, I would, I would have walked right up. I'm that guy that comes right out there. of the <laughs> store and there's two big Rottweilers in the back of a pickup truck. I walk right up to him and grab him by the cheek and go, oh, good puppy. Sure. And then I hear the owner going, get the hell away from them dogs. They'll chew your face off. And I look over and go, well, well they're not. And they're happy puppies. You know, I just, I kind of have a thing with animals and I've, and it might maybe the death of me. <laughs> right, I don't right. know. But I just did. There was no, I had no fear. Um, again, I you know I love your underwear changing moment. I love the stories. I, I didn't have that, but I, but um, looking back <laughs> on life, it was uh, I want a, a, a life directing moment. It was it did, I don't think it changed my life. It was kind of an, it, uh, the best way I can explain it. I guess it was um, uh, it directed me. Anybody that knows me from day one, anything Bigfoot, you know, in search of finding this, blah 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 blah. I'm watching it, no matter how stupid it mm-hmm. is, how comical it is. Or how legit it is, I'm on it. Right. My girlfriend is my best proponent. She goes, I fully, fully believe you. And she is a big and avid camper. And I've told her a million times, let's go camping, let's go camping. I said, I'm mm-hmm. not going camping. I've, I've gone, I prefer to stay to the state parks and whatnot just because of this, because I know there's something out there and I don't want any more part of it. I, I, um, you know, now that I've gotten a little more knowledge and a little more older and a little more wiser, you know, I don't want no part of it. I'll go camping with you, but we're going here. Oh, no, let's go to Skate Creek. You know, let's go to Wapato. Let's, you know, I, I think you know all these places. But, and I'm like, no, I got this mm-hmm. nice tent. I said, I'm not sleeping in the right. tent. I've gone once or twice. I sleep outside the tent with my shotgun. I'm, Why won't you sleep in the tent? And my quote, and I'll quote it today, and I'll quote it till the day I die, is I'm not going to be a sack lunch for a Sasquatch. It's not happening. Well, I took a friend of mine, and he took us camping, and this was up uh, on the way to Mount St. Helens, uh, the park up there. And, they, yes, exactly. Well, you, um, my my uh, parents <laughs> were caretakers at Silver Lake there for a long time. Cowlitz Valley Wildlife League. I'll, I'll even okay. tell you exactly where it's at. 
I know many people on the um, – I can even uh, – maybe at another time, I can tell you a ton of stuff. Now looking back, the, I, I've been all over that place. But anyway, we'll stay focused. Um they took us camping up there. This was long before they were caretakers there or anything. They just loved the place and decided to retire there. And my mom still lives there in Kelso. Uh, and my stepdad has since passed on. God rest his soul. Um, not a believer, by the way. Uh, but anyway, we camped there. And he had a little, uh, one of them tent trailers that pop out on either side. You know, they pop up and there's a tent on either side. Well, we were there at the park and, um, we stayed the night, whatnot, having a good time. Everything was good. And it was bed down time. And me and my buddy, and you could pull down little curtains, you know, between the folks on the other side and you on that side, and, you know, the little kitchen, like in the middle. So we're sitting there, and I look right. up behind my buddy, and I see the little tent portion of his thing. And it, they had little windows on them you could pull down. It was kind of plastic behind them, but like a little zipper thing you could open up and look out. But it, we were all zipped up. And I just remember mm-hmm. seeing it. It's coming in real slow. It's just coming in. It's coming in. And I'm looking at him. And he's looking at me. And I think we kind of connected. And I go, what's that? And this thing's coming in. He, he kind of rolls over looks straight up like, damn. Well, I reach over. And I touch it. And it goes. And it just sucks away. You hear yeah. anything outside the and Just before, before that, that we hear this giant. And I can't. I'm going to sound like an idiot. This big sniff, because I can't do it. It was the deepest sniff I've ever heard. It'd be like taking a 55-gallon drum and squeezing it like a whoopee cushion. You know what I mean? Just this big, this big sniff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I remember, well, that was what initiated it. We looked at each other, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of creepy. But it was right after that first initial sniff sound that little tent wall was coming in and I touched it and it went away. And then on my side, same thing. <laughs> it's just deep sniff. And I'm like, well, this ain't good. And I look at his eyes and his eyes are as big as saucers. And he points and I look up just what happened to him. Same damn thing. And I put my hand on it. I did the same thing. Put my hand on it. It just retracts instantly. Just disappears. And I'm like, well, this is creepy. And this, well, this happened about, I'd say, five, six times. It just, it just kept happening back and forth. You know, yeah. when, when it got from, like, my side to the middle of the tent, because it sloped on the one side. It never happened on that slope side, but it was just on either side of us. And we just kept hearing this. And it's like, <laughs> the last time it happened was right above my buddy. And I just, boom, I put my hand right on it, and I could feel... I could feel resistance, definite resistance, and again, it sucks back. His eyes are like saucers. He goes, what the hell is that? And I just looked him straight in the face. Um, my encounter that I just told you about kind of popped to my mind. I looked at him. I said, dude, it's Bigfoot. I, I was just wondering what, what it was all was I had to draw time. on. I've what never you, seen a bear. I've never seen time. anything in the wild. This was kind of really my first camping sure. adventure, you know what I mean? And it's state park, and I don't know if you really consider that wilderness yeah. or camping but it was the best i'd been other than roy you know eight ten years earlier well anyway i just looked at him i guess kind of yeah. with a half ass grin going that's bigfoot dude well that freaked him out and that freaked me out and again we laid there and it quit so we laid there just staring at the tent you know staring at the ceiling all night <laughs> never told the folks never nothing got up we're sleepless well, that morning we get up, and, you know, a couple of people are cooking breakfast. There's probably, I think there's about four to five groups of people there, you know, in various campsites. And uh, again, my memory, forgive me, I don't know if it was a game warden, a forestry service guy, a dude in uniform, you know, Smokey the Bear uniform, and Somebody ruffled everybody them. up. Kind of went to each campsite and kind of got everybody to the, you know, the little main road between, you know, they're, they're little road and you know you camp on either side of it and kind of got everybody to the road and said did anybody here see anything strange last night you know he kind of went one by one around to everybody he was the first family and, oh no we didn't, we didn't no, everything was fine we slept great and he just goes round and around and this whole time me and my buddy are looking at each other like wait a minute oh boy i, I can't wait till he gets to me you know 
Well, he gets to us. He goes, anybody hear anything strange or, you know, see anything last night? And I raised my hand, you know, being in school. I raised my hand. He goes, he goes, what What do you got, son? Sure. <laughs> he goes, what do you got, son? And I says, well, last night, you know, we heard a big sniff sound and something pushing on the tent. And he looks straight at it. And I, no less that I got that out of my mouth. He goes, oh, well, there was a bear in here last night. And the rest of the people, you know, go, oh, God. You know what I mean? That kind of, you know, you hear the wives go, oh, Lord. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was a bear in right. here. He goes, yeah. He said somebody had given us a call and reported a bear, you know, here in the park. Now, looking back, and of course, at this point, me and my buddy go, damn, a bear was pushing on our tent. Awesome. You know what I mean? This is kind of exciting. Wow. Well, now looking back, right? <laughs> there's no goddamn phones in this these campsites that you know there's there's no you know like on the bridge the emergency i'm gonna jump phone there was no cell phones so looking back i'm like who the hell reported this and got him out there from what you said he came around and asked people if they heard or saw anything strange and when there's a bear in the area well that's, that's the first thing yeah say, look, yeah you know hind, a bear in the area. hindsight's always 20 you know 20 i mean, I mean looking back approaches. at it why didn't this man walk in and go Hey, there was a. We heard there was a bear in the camp last night. Did anybody see it? No, this exactly. guy and and that's exactly this guy tickled everybody what, and alluded around. And of course, me and my buddy, we don't give a crap. Man, we'll just tell you straight up. Yeah, there was something sniffing outside our tent and pushing on the on the stuff. Oh, it was a bear. Sure. I mean, it, it literally that quick. As soon as he got acknowledgement, bam, it was a bear. And again, look, yeah. and we bought it. Book line sinker. Ah, cool. And, you know, again, you hear the wives, you know, on the other side of the street going, oh, my, you know. And, you know, the two of them packed up that sure. night said, well, we're out. We stayed another night. There was nothing else after that. You know, there was nothing else. So, uh, who knows? Government come in, chase them away, whatever. I don't know. You know, I'm, 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 I, all I can do is just share my story yeah. with you. Pretty interesting. You know, I, and I think this this probably been going on for a long time, man. I, it was just kind of odd. I mean, from listening to you. And shows and encounters, it, you know, it makes you look back a little bit and go, well, damn, that, you know, that kind of all didn't add up. <laughs> well, there's a lot in details, you know, when, especially like, like I mentioned, you know, when you're out camping and a ranger comes around and if there's been a bear in the area or a cougar or something, they'll come right up and tell yeah. you. That way you're alerted, you can be careful. But when they ask questions, before, yeah. you know, asking if you heard something. Yeah. Yeah, there was. That's a it, that, and a it, looking back, they, they were trying approach. to draw something out, and and I, I'm not again. I, the only bear I ever seen was a picture that a buddy gave me, and he brought me a steak, and it was pretty damn delicious. So with that, that sure. Um, and you can't no, say I for can't. sure that it was a Bigfoot, obviously, but usually when when bears come through a camp they're they're kind of noisy they're not really careful they they if they find something you know they dig it open to get the food and yeah again you know, being older real, and wiser this is a little tent trailer it's about an eight foot tent trailer you know that kicked out on either side and i'm thinking a, a bear i don't think can stand up and just sure. play with me back and forth and just gingerly push this canvas in let me ask you: Did you have any oh, yeah. food that would have been open where it would have, a bear? Would yeah, have there, food? yeah, there, there, there was there was stuff around. Well, there well, was other I mean, people too, you know, that all had stuff out. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I'm sure, sure. had left pots and pans out. Sure, I, I think a bear a bear would have gone through. And, that and kind that's of stuff the thing: not um, the tent with people in it. And, and and that's another thing I believe, if I recall right, he asked, "Is anything missing?" There was nothing missing, no destruction, no nothing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, kind of looking back, you know, there's coffee pots out. There was frying pans over fires and, and you know, all that kind of good stuff that would, I'm sure, bring sure. a bear in. But the last time it did it, I, I just, I, I put my hand directly on it because it's kind of creepy at this point. You know, I'm kind of had enough. This, you know, I'm looking at my buddy's eyes. Yeah. You know, I, I can see. You know, his blue eyes, his white, and, you know, his goddamn eyelids, you know, <laughs> a quarter inch around them. Like, what the hell's going on? You know, looking at me <laughs> like I'm supposed to know. And I'm like, I don't know. So I just right. smack whatever's pushing in on this tent. I just, not smack, but 
touch it and push, and there was definite resistance there. And I'm thinking a bear, they can be ginger, but I don't, I don't think a bear was so ginger that it could have done this four or five times so methodical and so ginger. I mean, it, it was slow, dude. I, I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm telling you, it was real, real slow. Right. Oh, I mean, so slow that you couldn't, you couldn't detect it unless you were looking at it. it and I, I seen it first above my like buddy that all of a sudden material. just this tent part above his head was damn near pushed in over his head. You know, he's sleeping up against that wall. I'm a, up against this side of the wall and, it's like out and in over its head. Right. And I'm like, dude, and he looks up and he's kind of looking straight up at the tent pushed in. I mean, if a bear jumped up, I think this goddamn whole thing would have, you know, would have done a turn, you know, cause you put them on them cheesy little, you know, this was back in what 80 something, you know what I mean? If a bear jumped up there, it, it just would have, it would have knocked mm-hmm. the whole tent and the noise would have been made. And, and the damn thing would have beat feet looking back. Um, if I had to guess, if I think somebody was just screwing with us, it was like they held uh, maybe an 8, 10-inch frying mm-hmm. pan and pushed it against it is what it looked like. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm getting around to is the size doesn't really indicate bear either because a, a bear's paw isn't really yeah, much uh, different. Uh, um, again, I've I seen hand, this really. at least three times in myself, and it, if I had to compare it, Again, it's not real vivid, but again, you're trying to figure things out. You don't know what the hell is going on. You know, maybe maybe old Uncle Joe's drunk over there and, you know, trying to hold yeah, himself that's... up. I don't know. And, you know, and it wasn't a frying pan. It wasn't sure. a perfect circle. But there was something slowly moving that, moving that right. thing in, man. It was creepy. It was creepy. That's pretty intriguing, though, you know. Yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about what you were telling me about your, uh, I your totally mother. will. And I have talked uh, to that her was pretty and, um, I've told her about you. She said she's, she has more than what I can tell you. And if you'd like to talk to her, I can set you up with, with her. Okay. She is a, she's a great lady. She said, yeah, that's um, great. she, she oh, she's, she's, she just by herself in Kelso. She's, um, man, she, she sticks in her house. Uh, Again, after this whole spotted owl, I think we all know Kelso Washington, uh, Kelso Longview. You know, took a took a dip, and it's kind of I call it Methlehem. Sure, but he knows. That. I, I have then, a pretty good friend that lives. In then the you know, there's uh, there's a lot of god, a lot of goddamn guys right. on bicycles with backpacks and tools just to drive around all night long looking for stuff, car prowls, this and that. It's it's it used to be a. It, Used to be a sweet town, but it's 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 taken oh, a turn yeah. since the industry dipped. Uh, I think there's still a right, a paper absolutely. mill there, or a at least a wood mill there. Something there's, there's not much left. You, you either own a business or you work for the business. What? Right. Well, tell me, tell me what it was. She uh, was well, she sits about there and it, it, she the has scanners. a scanner. And again, when you know, we got her the little uh, you know, special crystal chip that you're not supposed to have. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It's an old. Radio Shack one, but you know, once you're in, you're in. Uh, we won't <laughs> sure. say much more about that. But and I sit and I get caught up with it, you know, with her too, sitting right. down there. Oh, <laughs> and, you know, and and she's so familiar with it. Oh, yep. There's Jim up the road. He's drunk again. You know, <laughs> I call it a third sense. You know, that scanner will be going off for me. It's white noise, but she actually hears it and watches TV at the same time. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. <laughs> you know. But, uh, again, <laughs> after talking to you and kind of explained to her, you know, because I tried getting a little information as to, you know, my encounter and this and that. And she goes, oh, I remember all this and the can and the things and all the crap. And she goes, you know, she says, since talking to you, she never she never bought into any of this crap. And mostly because of my stepdad. He was he was one that, we're it, we're the masters, there's nothing else, and that was it. Well, he's gone now, and so her mind's opening up a little more. She's right. been that way, but suppressed. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, she sits and listens to the scanner. She goes, you know, Dwayne, and the last mm-hmm. time I'm talking, and this was uh, uh, two nights ago, she says, you know, since <laughs> the last time I talked to her, because I, after I talked to you, I called her and tried to get a little in, more information, and she ended her conversation with, thanks for the information, Dwayne, and I says, no, 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 Mom, this is just stuff that's out there, you know, you just go look it up it's you know well anyway and then she calls me back and she called and i ignored her because you know 
She's mom. Sometimes they can get annoying. My bad. <laughs> and I ignored a few call. I ignored a few calls, but she <laughs> calls me back. I finally answered. She goes, "Man, I'm saying I'm glad you answered." She goes, "You know, after talking to you, she goes, there's been many, many times I sit here and I listen to this scanner, and there's all those homeless people and bums. She calls them bums down on the river that call all the time and say mm -hmm. there's a Bigfoot down here or there's a Sasquatch down here." And she says, and, and again, she has the special chip, so she, she has the side channels and stuff. And she, I'm going to get in trouble. Um, but she says the police instantly laugh. She goes, they just laugh. And she says, more often than not, they just say, we're not going. <laughs> we're not going to go. We've heard this before. They, they do. They just blow it off. And they, again, they just um, blow it off. people down in their luck, hey, crackheads, tweaks, whatever you want to call them, doesn't mean they can't see it, too. And now, now mind you, this is you know this is the Calus River. True. It's I don't know if you've ever been there. It's it's there's a quite a stretch on either side of that river, right through that area. Oh it's, yeah, I, I live. Well, it's I live, pretty damn yeah, wooded. Live, you know, there's a good there's a good hundred yards years. from you know like the train tracks to the river, and then again on the other side, there's there is quite a right. uh, you know green track there. You know, and we know where that river goes. You know, it comes you know Mount St. Helens, all that. Right. Um. And, you know, so she hears this. She says she's mm -hmm. heard it multiple times, and the police just laugh, and they say, we ain't going. And she hears it, and, and believe you me, dude, I'm going to do a little research for you. Next time I'm down there, I'm just going to set my phone down or get my little recorder and just listen to this, and I would love to capture one for you just to send to you that they laugh at. That'd be pretty interesting. You made a good point when we talked earlier about that is – you know the fact. No, that those folks they don't. don't really no, want these, these the are all down people that <laughs> that don't want any contact with the police. That's the last person they. So when one of them calls them, it's got to be real. Something something has to happen. They they are right because typically they they've got drugs or whatever exactly. for whatever reason. They would prefer the police just stay on the other side of the train tracks and it's all good. But when you know, just say every other week, somebody's saying. You know, hey, there's a monster down here. There's a big foot. And my mom said a lot of times they say there's a big foot down here. Could you come check it out? And she tells me that. And I've heard and I, yeah. I can interpret it enough from my mom, you know, because I've, I've you know, again, I can't help but hear it because it's on 24 seven while I'm down there and you kind of get used to it. And you do hear them laugh about things. And I've heard it. You know, sure. so I can totally believe her when she says, you know, hey, could you guys come, you know, dispatch gets on the police, you know, gets on with the police. And they go, well, we got another one down at the river that says he sees a big foot. And then dude comes back, you know, uh, 10, 9, whatever. Um, and then they get it. Isn't that pretty interesting, though? I mean, it's it's gotten to be so yeah. routine well, with exactly. them that they say, and, oh, we've got another one. And that's this is what my mom has told me. But they totally And, and again, it. if you want, um, I've talked to her, and she's more than willing to talk to you about this. She's heard it over and over. She's been down there 30 years, and has heard this, and she and believe yeah. she's been blowing this scanner this whole time. So Sure. She's got more stories than I can tell you. I'm, right. I'm secondhand yeah, information. Yeah, I would love to talk, at, talk to her. You know, not the best. She'll tell you straight up, and uh, you know, with, with with not with no BS. She'll tell you straight up. She's straightforward. She's straightforward. She'll tell you straight up what she's heard over and over and over. If you don't waver from a story, oh, uh, she, she's a sweetheart. She sounds like you a know? pretty interesting lady to talk to. And I, I I've kind of sparked her into. Like I say, she's blown it off. Doesn't believe in the least. But told her my story. Told her that I've you know mm -hmm. talked to you guys. And I finally get to share it. I finally shared the story with her heart to heart, face to face. And she believes it. And then now she's, and it's kind of funny how this rolls is she's busted open now, she, you know, and says, well, you know, Dwayne, I hear this all the time on the scanner down here. And I says, well, mom, the area where you live was shut down wow. because of an owl that I can't go see tomorrow. Uh, you know, and, and I explained to her, I said, Go on the internet, spend right. 10 minutes looking up Bigfoot. Go on the internet, spend 10 minutes looking up a spotted owl. Then spend another hour finding out where you can go see either one. I said, I'll bet you it's exactly the same. I'll bet you you can't go see a spotted owl tomorrow. I said, I'll come down there and drive you to it, but where are you going to go see one? think it was their test because here we are 30 years later. I have to remind people 
of the spotted owl and the whatever and whatever what the blue tailed scarlet yeah, there was another bird they anymore. threw in on that too. I don't I, I really don't believe it now. I think it was a test to see how people would react, what impact it would have. I, I think they were protecting uh Vasquez. That's I think it was a test well, they, and, they and what better place something, than think. just Po Dunk nowhere. Well listen, Dwayne, um, we're just about out of time. No, Any final uh, thoughts? just keep going. Do what you're doing. I love it. This is all great. Uh, um, again, giant weight off my shoulders. I love to share this with everybody. Again, you know, I'm a 50 year old man. I, you know, spent a good 30 years convincing myself what I think never happened. Um, and if I have to give any of these stupid shows credit, it is bringing it to the forefront. And it did help me tell my story. It helped me bring it back up. I don't buy what they're doing. I, I certainly appreciate it, and I know listeners out there will appreciate it because when people like yourself and even myself, when I began telling my accounts, uh, I, I can't tell you how many times people have contacted me and told me their their what happened to them. They just want to get it off their shoulders. Yeah, you know? he, he he flipped out and left. Yeah, you he said, said he I he said week. I looked into the show that you told me about. He came in, did a oogie boogie at lunchtime. I haven't seen him since. It's been a week. He's out. <laughs> yeah, he flipped. He, and he was pretty passionate about it. Wow. So he'll I'll come I'll comfort him. I'd love to get him a hold of you. He's, he's got your information. He'll come back. <laughs> and if and again, before we before we wrap this up, everybody, if, you, if you'd if you like to get a hold of me, you can get in touch with me at my personal email, williamjevning at yahoo.com. Uh, we can talk about this on the show or off the show. It's your preference. Uh, I have every, you know, respect for people's right to privacy. Uh, you know, so if you don't want your story known, that's great. Uh, if you do, that's great too, because, uh, like yours, Dwayne, it really, it's therapeutic for the witness. It's also therapeutic for other people who haven't felt comfortable to tell their account. Uh, and it really is something that kind of gets bottled up in you and, and telling it sort of gets it out. And if I can tagline that, deal with it, just tell your story. I don't care if people believe you or not. Just tell it, tell it, tell it. Just tell it. Just don't. Just don't give a crap that I, I, I went through forty years of eye rolls, and yes, I believe you, and we know it's crap. But just tell your story. Tell your story, and God bless you for an avenue like this to get it out. Just do it. Anybody listening, just just tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Even if it sounds crazy, just tell it. We'll t- chat again soon. Now, happy holidays, man. Uh, God love. Thank you, Dwayne. And I hope your New Year's good. I hope to talk to you before then. But anyway. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.